Hello there, I'm David with uh, Makerspace Series 7. This uh, quick video, we're going to show you guys how to use a free online uh, program to design boxes that you can then uh, import into Lightburn and cut with the laser cutter here at Makerspace Series 7. Um, so, got a couple of different uh, versions that are all use the same program. So, this is just a simple uh, drawer organizer that I've made. Um, here's essentially the same basic design, but it has these. Um, hinges built into it, so we have this double opening box. Uh, this is what we use in our uh, wood shop for pencils. So uh, we're going to just be designing a simple box, um, more more along the lines of this. Um, if we have time, we will also show how to do the simple hinged box. So uh, first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and um, fire up your web browser of choice. We're going to be going to uh, F-E-S-T-I dot I-N-F-O forward slash boxes dot P-Y. So go here. So this is the program we're going to be using. Um, it's got tons and tons of uh, different options, um, not just boxes um, or not just simple boxes. Um, there's even things like there's a little uh, sticky note folder that I made. So you got a lot of a, a lot of really cool options. Um, today we're just going to be doing a simple box. So uh, we're going to come over here, hit boxes. Now these are all of the options um, that they currently have. Um, some of these, when you um, pop around, you actually can see the little preview on the lower right hand side. Uh, not all of them have previews, but a lot of them do. So uh, the one that we're going to use, the one that I use most often, is this universal uh, box down here. And so you look at this and it's kind of kind of complicated. There's tons and tons of settings, um, but you don't really need to change that much to make it work. Um, I like to just come down here, universal box settings, and uh, to create uh, this box here, you need to change the top edge to stackable top and the bottom edge to stackable bottom. So uh, stackable top and bottom, that's what, that's what these uh, shapes here are. So that is made so you actually can make another box that's the same size. And then they just uh, nest right on one another and they're actually very stable. So um, I like doing that for open top boxes because that is handy in case I make a, a second one of the same size. I also think that when you are... Um, setting it on a uh, tabletop surface. Let's see if I can kind of create a tabletop here. It just looks a little more finished than the box just sitting right on the ground. So hopefully that makes sense to somebody else as well. So let's just go ahead and hop back in here. So then the next thing we need to do is adjust our size. So it's uh, really good. Most of these are commented. So uh, X setting is our inner width millimeters, unless outside is selected, and we have outside selected. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and we'll we'll double one of the directions, and then the height. I like uh, for most of these boxes. I like doing the height of either uh, 25 or 75 millimeters. So I don't know why. It just seems to or 55, 50 or 75 millimeters, sorry. Um, so we'll just do that one 50. I just think it looks a little nice, a little bit nicer. Now, um, so those are the majority of the settings that you need to um, adjust these right here. Um, so that sets your box. Now, the most important thing that's going to make this um, the most successful is you need to measure, you need to measure the wood that you're going to use. Um, so what I like to do is, here's our little piece that we've um, used previously. I like to get our uh, pair of calipers here. These are digital calipers. Make sure they read millimeters. Um, there'll be a little, mil little millimeter in there. And I like to take a couple of different measurements. So 2.94, 2.93, I'll even come here. Um, so that one is 2.94 as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save that the material I have is 3 millimeters. Now this material we get, uh, it is uh, put out by, I don't know if I can show you that or not, but this is 
uh, Midwest products sold, sold as craft pot, nominal, <laughs> uh, eighth inch, three millimeter. Now, uh, important thing to remember, you want to, before you cut, you always want to uh, measure material, even if you're using the same stack of wood you got at the same time, because there is variation, uh, slight variation on uh, plywood. Uh, it says eighth inch, it's not actually eighth inch. It's nominally eighth inches, like a two by four isn't two inches by four inches, but we won't get into that too much. So now we're going to hop back on over here. So now that we have our thickness, um, this would be where you would enter in your thickness. I actually like to round up a little bit. I don't mind having a little bit of um, extra space in there. Uh, with this particular material that weighs or that uh, measures uh, 2.93 to 2.95, um, I usually go with uh, three millimeters thickness. Um, I don't have an issue. We do have a little bit of uh, extra leeway. That's what this burn is. Um, so that's essentially accounting for the kerf, kerf the width of our um, our uh, laser cutter uh, beam. So now once you have all your settings in there and you're satisfied with them, we just come over here and we hit generate. So it opens up this new window and you kind of look at it and it's kind of like, okay, well, what do I do with it? So the way that I like to work with this is I right click anywhere on this. What this actually is displaying is an SVG file, which is what we're going to need for our um, project. So I just right click and then do save as, and then I like to save it as um, a name that I will remember. Uh, I'll just call this one demo box open because it has an open top. Um, now let's go ahead and go back and let's do, I'll show you how easy it is to change this to a uh, double hinge door box. So on uh, top edge, you just go ahead and click there. And you scroll down. If you see this one, there are, <laughs> of course, now I can't find it. I'm sure everyone's just jumping up and down saying, right there, right there. Um, so I like to use uh, straight edge with hinge eye. So that's that's what this one is. Straight edge with hinge eye bolt ends. So now they also do have a single sided one. Um, I like the double a little bit more on square boxes, um, which I guess, speaking of which, let's go ahead and modify that too so it is a square box. Um, have, didn't have to change any of my other settings, now hit generate. Same thing, now I've got myself a nice little um, 200 millimeter square box. That's kind of shallow, but that should be fine. Um, now that is pretty big, so I guess I wouldn't want to actually make that so... Um, we'll just come back here. We'll do 100 millimeters. That is easy. That's the easy thing to do. And let's just change this one to... Well, here, let's measure. So, this old one I had at 30. So let's go ahead, or 25. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. We'll basically recreate this box. Um, and right, so that's how easy it is to change these things. Um, that's a little bit thin, so let's go ahead and um, change this one more time because I forgot that's going to be including the uh, feet. So let's get an actual measurement. I'm at about 40, so we'll just call it 50. We'll make a little deeper box. Okay, there we go. That looks better. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. Right-click, Save As. Demo box lid. Oops. Put a slash in there. Okay, demo box lid. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the laser control software, which is Lightburn. So what I like to do is I like to be lazy. And so I just use the oops. Uh, so I just I just dragged it off from my downloads or from the uh, browser. Now it's just saying file contains text objects which aren't supported. That's fine. We just go ahead and hit OK. Um, and I'll kind of show you what that means. So if you notice right here, there's this little box. And in the original file, which is this one here, um, it has 100 millimeters. And as you can see, we don't have that there. Um, not needed. It'll still work for our purposes. So let's also go ahead and drag in our Demo box lid. We're going to get the same error message because it's going to have the same box. There is a way to, to not have it import this, but I like having it just for good measure. 
Now, um, in Lightburn, there's one quick way you can actually change between inches and millimeters just by clicking this little section here. This gives you your height, your sizes. Just click on this, either inch or millimeter, changes to the other. So, with the box with the lid, or with the um, one where we select stackable top, stackable bottom, so there's our sides, just like what we have here. But if you notice, there is also these pieces. And what that is, is actually essentially another small one of these that it allows you to add a lid that covers everything up. Um, I never use those. So what I actually like to do is I delete all those pieces. So I just select them, hit delete on the keyboard. And then if you notice, we actually have two of these larger pieces because one of them is actually put at the top. So I like to delete one of those as well. Um, then this is our other guy. So one weird thing about this uh, when you import them is you have two different colors. For our purposes, we're going to be cutting everything that's on here. So we're just going to go ahead and select them. Hit black or whatever color you want to use for cut. That's what I like to use. Um, uh, 15 and 20 are decent uh, settings for cutting the three millimeter plywood. Um, if we were cutting some of the stuff that's more on like the, the five millimeter thickness, um, we'd be looking at probably setting of 12 speed and, and maybe 50 power or 15 speed and 50 power. Um, it just really depends. Sometimes you have got to test multiple times. And like I say, not every piece of wood is going to be exactly like every other. Um, it is natural material. And especially in plywoods, there's sometimes extra glue or voids that you have to contend with. So, um, so as not to make this take too much longer, we're just going to go ahead and do a little bit of um, cleanup on this. And that is actually how you... So I'm just selecting and moving these around. Uh, one important thing, if you bring them in and you don't mess with them, it will show the, like if you don't ungroup anything, the sides will be grouped with their holes. If for some reason you happen to accidentally ungroup things, you want to make sure that if you move one of the side cutouts, you bring the holes with it, because obviously it won't work very well without its holes. So, um, Hopefully this has been helpful. Next video we're actually going to show how to uh, take this same file and uh, actually export it to the laser, and we'll uh, cut and assemble our box. So hope, hope to see you then.